So I was inspired to make this video um, because of the toxicity of the internet. And um, lately I've been in the, some of the gun Facebook groups and, and online and, and seen a whole lot of um, elitism and snobbery that's perhaps a little bit misplaced. So the point of this whole video is to go over a build that meets uh, an under $2,000 budget. Uh, for a practical combat applications rifle that will also aid you in, in terms of home defense um, as well as community defense. So um, getting into it real quick, talk about some criteria for me. When it comes to a rifle that needs to have an acceptable combat performance, I'm going to be looking at something that can accurately hit targets from zero to 300 meters. And when we're talking about from a civilian context, we're going to dial that way back to maybe one to 200 meters. You need to be able to confidently make hits from a uh, supported position with that rifle, which means that you have to have an at least, you know, somewhat quality barrel on it. Um, and you need to be able to expend one full combat load of ammunition without any, um, any pause in your cadence. So what's the average? round count shot in a civilian context typically around 12 or so within about 10 yards right so you you're dialing that back and you need to have something that goes above and beyond those standards but also meets your budget so i might upset a couple people here um but i wanted to go ahead and make this build in order to make some of the ar elitist cry so this is an aero precision build essentially um, in terms of the receiver groups so I think that the Aero 16 inch classic M4 upper was about $300 or so on sale. And then in terms of the lower, this is the lower that I've had for several years now. It was on my URGI build um, originally. And I think maybe all in with everything involved, the lower is around 500 bucks. Um, so we're going to go tip to butt here and talk about it real quick. Um, I really don't like just seeing people go over a gun. I want to see them perform with it. I want to see a little bit of shooting. So we're going to depart from our normal, um, our normal style and we're going to dive straight into me shooting uh, what I call just a burn down drill with this real quick. So that's going to be a um, basically a modulation of like battle drill one alpha squad attack. Um, I'm going to be in a linear motion moving towards my targets, expending about 100 rounds or so, about as fast as I can possibly do it, and make sure that I'm getting hits on target and that this thing is continuing to perform. Before I get into the build, um, I want to lead with a little bit of a rant, okay? Uh, and a little bit of a, an anecdote about my personal experiences. So there was this group on Facebook, some group that had the word snobs in it. And um, one of the admins of that group regularly dragged people through the mud. You know, um, they would post something, arrow precision, he'd see a lower, an arrow lower and say, oh, nice build, but the arrow makes it a zero out of 10, try again, you know, this, that, and the other. And the thing is, is that the tactical world is a pretty small community. So I had attended a class with this very same guy, maybe six months prior or so. And he had a $7,000 rifle, you know, suppressor, very expensive uh, land laser aiming module, nice light, the whole nine yards is like, you know, a Radian or something along those lines. And uh, I'm gonna start with the dude probably has a BMI of about 37, right? So morbidly obese. And he was just kind of fumble fucking his way through the entire day. He, the dude was not a performer to any degree. So just understand when you go online, um, real life can follow you, right? And people notice that kind of thing. You know, be the same person you are on the internet as you are in real life. Have some consistency because that matters a lot more than 
just the temporary rush of thinking that you impress a couple people that are never going to have any discernible effect on your life. So that was just a quick little rant that I wanted to go on. Talk about this build. So everything in the upper is you know completely standard in terms of the barrel to the receiver itself. The barrel, you know, arrow, their um, OEM for their barrels, I believe, is Ballistic Advantage, and so far this has given me that practical combat performance that I'm looking for. What you're really looking for when it comes to something that's within an acceptable budget is about four MOA, okay? So sub MOA is great all day, but most of the time when you have a sub MOA rifle, uh, it's being held by a, by a four MOA shooter, right? So if you're a sub MOA shooter with a four MOA rifle, you're doing pretty good. Um, standard A2 birdcage that came with the upper, and then here's where we made a couple changes. So the there were two things that really inspired the aesthetic of this build. One, the guys that are over in Ukraine using budget equipment to protect freedom, uh, you know, to protect the, the freedom of the known world, right? Uh, and then two, uh, Marine Force Recon. So, you know, I've said it before, I'm a prior infantryman. I am an army guy myself, but I've got the utmost respect for our Marines out there. And there's something about the way Force Recon takes what they have and um, makes it work for them that really shines with me and is super sexy. So we're gonna move down to the light and the, the laser aiming module. Now, this is the PEC-15 that's in all of my videos. Um, the at pile C again not the best laser in the world but it will achieve hitting things at night especially in the context of some form of self-defense and to be quite honest with you if it comes down to needing a mall or something along those lines in terms of the prepared citizen um, you will be given that <laughs> right if you if we get invaded by China you will get a PEC 15 if you're somebody who needs to be using one uh, but that being said, I've got the app pile, the app PL. I've got my Surefire here. This is not the Surefire that would normally live on this uh, on this build. You may recognize it from my Geisley build, um, and that's because this would normally have a Surefire Turbo. I got the Surefire Turbo with the intent of having this be a laserless build with just a light, a rail, and an optic. Something that you can throw to your wife or you can pick up when something goes bump in the night and defend your household with. The thing about the Surefire Turbo, it's pretty much the best light that I've ever used in terms of output, but the mount broke on me. It actually sheared off while I was running some dry fire um, drills in my house, and I didn't bump it against anything, anything like that. The tension of the screw the constant tension of the screw caused it to shear off of my rail and fall off. So I'm currently in the RMA process with Surefire about that, but um, I never like it when the end user has to be the beta tester for a piece of equipment. I, I hope that they um, address that issue soon. Uh, we've got our dual pressure pad right here. And uh, my light and my laser live on this Ergo rail extension. So this is something that both um, Standard Army and Marine Force Recon have started using en masse in order to kind of get that block two thing going on where you've got the rail extending past your front sight post and freeing up all this space for things like pressure pads for your grip, making it a more comfortable platform. Um, I have had concerns about the accuracy, maintaining the accuracy of the laser on this uh, rail extension. And really, when you look at it from a um, from kind of a mechanical point of view, it's no less secure having these six uh, cross bolts than it is just having the the tension of the delta ring pushing this rail up against the, the front sight post. Uh, and essentially what that boils down to is with a build like this, non-free float barrel and rails that are um, secured basically via tension, you're not going to get the best zero in general across the board. So the, the way to address that is before you go out and uh, decide to be a goon cagger on some sort of night mission, reference your laser to your zero at about 50 yards on your red dot, okay? So 50 yards zero on the red dot is pretty standard. Whatever your zero is, kind of judge that distance, make sure that they're crossing over with each other and you will get, um, you will get hits out to that distance. Moving down to the, uh, the rail itself, this is actually a PNS, primary and secondary 
rasp rail, so this is not the CAC. Um, in my experience, you know, I've had the I've had the CAC issued to me. I've run the CAC and everything. This is the same exact rail. Um, there is no functional difference between this and the Knight's Armament, but you can get this for about 180 to 250. Um, oh, we got a hunting dog. No, keep running. Keep running. Hey, hunting dog. Just had a hunting dog run past me. You could go with the Knight's Armament, but you're going to be paying about $300 or so for it for a rail that's not worth $300 to be honest. At that point you might as well get yourself a wrist 2 Daniel Defense. Um, that's going to be a free flow option. It's going to be more um, more accurate and put less tension on the barrel and mess with those uh, barrel harmonics. Coming down to the optic, the ubiquitous Aimpoint Pro. I was on the fence about this optic for several years. I thought that it, it was, you know, thought that it was a budget optic i thought that it was you know not probably duty grade uh it wouldn't perform well with night vision etc and the moment that i got an aimpoint pro in my collection i can say confidently i never want to have i, I never want to go without having one at least ready to go okay um, especially when you look at some of the footage of guys fighting in ukraine and they're running comp m2s and aimpoint pros and they're doing more with them than a lot of us collectively combined have ever done but in terms of the performance with me it's it's been a fantastically performing optic you can get this for about 350 dollars sometimes even lower on the used market all right so so far right now um we're looking at a little over a thousand dollars for what we've what we've reviewed minus the laser just keep in mind that the laser is not the integral part of this build. This laser swaps between rifles depending on uh, if I feel I need it or not. Coming back behind, we've got a Maytech flip open sight. This does not work with the Aimpoint Pro, and that's because I have a SKD Tactical QRP 2.04 riser on it. So you look at the, you look at it. It's at a 2.04 height, a little bit higher than 193. And that gives me that heads up position that I like. Okay. And it can actually reference well with my sun and shadow riser here on the car stock um, to go ahead and give me that heads up position. Works a lot better with plate carriers, gas masks, etc. I'm at the point now where 193 is the bare minimum height of an optic that I want to run for non magnified optics. And then we come into the, the two main pieces that make this rifle run like a high-end rifle. The lower parts kit and the buffer system. Instead of messing with the gas tube and messing with the muzzle device and everything on the end of the gun, you can, you can definitely make a big change to the way your weapon handles on the back end. Um, it's got a BCM kind of standard lower parts kit in there uh, with the Troy ambidextrous uh, safety which you know I'm ambivalent about ambidextrous safeties I use it when it's there when it's not there I don't miss it but it feels pretty nice and then a Geisley um, SDE flat trigger um, I really like two stage triggers on ARs you know you can go really fast with them um, single stage triggers are great as well this is just what I happen to choose for this one coming into the buffer system we've got the Viator A5 system so you, you're running a rifle length buffer system on a carbine length um, setup, which is going to slow down the speed in which that bolt actuates and is going to give you a lot better of a recoil impulse. But to make it even better, ballistic advantage barrels are a little bit gassy. Okay, I think that their gas ports are at least 0 0.075 or 0 0.078. Um, and that carbine length buffer gives you a pretty violent recoil impulse on a rifle, right? So to take it one step further, this is an H2 Viator A5 or A2 in their system, I believe, with a Geisley Super 42 braided buffer spring in rifle length as well. And then I don't even recall what bolt carrier group I have in there. I will say when it comes to bolt carrier groups, don't skimp out. Like at, at least spend about 200 bucks on your bolt carrier. That's the heart of your weapon. Um, and make sure that when you buy it, you check to make sure that, that, um, that the gas key is properly staked on there. 
and you shouldn't really have too many problems. Uh, I am probably going to change this to a BCM FDE bolt carrier. And I might change a couple things around on this rifle just for fun in the future. But the whole point behind this rifle build was to have something affordable and um, still have a good aesthetic to it and still run well, right? So, um, so that being said, like I mentioned, you know, when I see somebody talk about a rifle, I really want to see them run that rifle. So what we're going to be doing is a drill that I just made up, like on the way here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run about 100 rounds through this. Um, we're going to verify that we can make hits at 200 meters right out of the gate. Then we're going to pick it up and we're going to run, do some burn downs on a couple targets and make a 200 meter sprint to the finish line you know, taking these targets down sequentially one by one. This is not to simulate an exact combat situation. This is just to run the rifle, get a little bit of PT on me and kind of ramp up, see how I can perform. All right, so we're gonna just real quick, make sure that we can verify zero at 200 under supported. So I've got a steel target 10 inches at 200 meters. We're gonna verify that zero. Three out of four. I had one uh, one that I pulled. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to ramp it up a little bit. So these next couple targets, I'm going to be doing at least five in each target. Then we're going to Mozambique them as we pass. We're going to sprint 75 yards down to the next target. Do the same thing. We're going to move to cover. Maybe conduct a reload throughout that process. We're going to engage some more targets at 50 yards, maybe ring a little bit of steel, and then fi you know, finish this thing out. So that was that drill. I ran it a little bit too fast. Um, so I only ended up going through 60 rounds instead of uh, the 90 that I would like to. But uh, the point remains, you know, I've shot a little over 300 rounds today just doing this drill a couple times in a row. Had a good time with it. Zero malfunctions. You know, this build itself has, I've already put um, a little over a thousand rounds through it. Uh, it could probably do for a cleaning, but other than that, have never had an issue. A lot of that can be attributed to um, the, the way that I tune the internals on the build. Before I close things out, I want to say that when it comes to the preparedness world, when it comes to the tactical world, all the guns in the world, all the suppressors, all the Gucci lasers won't make up for the other deficiencies in your life. So having health within your personal relationships, physical health, physical fitness, um, financial health, these are all going to aid you exponentially more when it comes to preparedness than looking cool on a flat range and shooting guns. Um, and that's just, I'm speaking to you just as much as I'm reminding myself of that. But if you don't have that trifecta of things squared away within your life, you really have no reason to talk down to other people on their journey. Just remember, this is not a huge community. It's a pretty small world out there. And we need as much support as we can get. We need as many friends as we can get. Um, and you're doing a disservice to yourself and the community when you, um, when you act out and kind of 
put yourself on a pedestal. So always be humble and kind. And uh, that's all I got to say for this one.